You ready for this, Bear? I've been prepping. Wrong. Yes. Wrong. I've been, I've Wrong. been prepping. No, I've been prepping. Oh, okay. <laughs> I've been prepping. We're going to bring you an extra special style of the extra points this week as Bear and I have the great sports debate of 2016. Uh, have a little fun since... Uh, Please, no wagering. No so wagering. Probably a little more fun than it was Monday night. Probably going to be a lot uh, less hectic. A bit weird, but... Yeah, that was weird. Uh, we figure we'll do a little riff on the debate. So yeah. uh, we'll, we'll answer all the usual questions. Uh, we're just going to do it debate style this week. That's right. Just to switch it up a little bit. Yeah. So just stick around for this week's extra special version of Extra Points. Welcome in, everybody. I'm Eric Schmolt, next to John Barry here. We're here for the uh, first ever Great debate. Extra Points Sports Debate of 2016. Uh, I don't know that we'll have other versions like the presidential candidates will, no. but you know, since the first one was Monday night, we figured, uh, why don't we just have a little back and forth. That's this right. Is, uh, typically, we just get together and chat about local and state sports, but this week... We're going we're gonna to duke we it out here. We we're, don't know each other's answers. That's so true. It's and going to be interesting. I think we will do our best to make sure, even if we don't necessarily we agree, agree with how... We're going to disagree. Let's go against each other yes, no matter what. Yes, let's go against the green. Sounds so, uh, good. So we've got uh, Dave on Falkenstein here as our moderator. Thanks, Lester. And, uh, you bet. <laughs> He's going to try to do a better job than Lester Holt that I'm on uh-huh. night. And, you know, we're just going to tackle all, all the main issues that we've got going and on And i just like to preface this by saying that I'm debating someone that's picked the New Orleans Saints to go to the hey, Super Bowl. Hey, hey, so, we'll get to uh, that. Uh, you, you call up Sean Hannity. He might tell you otherwise. Okay, all right. Call up Sean Hannity. Uh, right. Without further ado, uh, I think we, we have separated this debate into two different uh, categories with high school sports and non-high school sports, and we're going to start out on the high school sports we side are. of things. And uh, okay. we'll let the viewers decide uh, uh, this week who won the debate. All right, it's fair enough. All right, so here we go. Question number one. We get a minute each here. All right. And that's it, and then we move on. Will the Janesville football team make the playoffs? I'm going to say yes on a technicality. Uh, I think either Parker or Craig probably finishes four and five, more likely Parker. And they got in last year with a four and five record. I don't know how the playoff field is going to change this year from where it was last year, depending on the number of teams in Division One. But I think the Vikings get in at four and five. They could possibly go five and four, which would get them in automatically. Three games left against uh, Memorial, Beloit, and West. Winnable games. But even if they only win two or three, I say Parker gets in. I am going to agree with you on. Parker getting into the playoffs, but I'm going to take a much firmer stance, and I'm going to say that they win out these last three games and get in automatically, and they're not going to be waiting around in week nine to wait and see if enough teams make it to get in on this technicality that you speak of. You, you like, you got to go off on all these tangents I, I, and loopholes. I'm just giving and, you an answer. Well, I don't, I don't like to be all wishy-washy in it. Like, I, I want my teams either in or out automatically. I'm going Parker winning out here. It starts this week with Beloit. I think they really gained some momentum. Um, they better, more, yeah. Madison Memorial, I think, is a team that everybody thought would be pretty good. They've been a bit, uh, a bit of helter skelter, haven't figured things Bad. out. Yeah. And, uh, and then I think it, if they get to four and four, and you're going into that week nine, and you know you need a win, I think they go out and get it done. Okay. So uh, we're sort of agreeing here, but I'm taking a much firmer stance. Okay. On good. How the well, Vikings I, get the Vikes hope you're right. They probably hope I'm right because they're still in the playoffs either way. <laughs> Will one team win the Rock Valley alone? You give me the floor on this one? You got the floor. I'm going to surprise you, and I'm going to say yes. I think I, I'm guessing the Bears. Wrong. Are, no, <laughs> no, here we go. Uh, I, you know, I think Clinton, uh, we've talked about them week in and week out here. Uh, I don't see them losing another game. They're going to finish 8-1. and one. They've got the easiest road here over the last three weeks. After seeing them on Friday, I just don't see who stops them here down the stretch. And... I'm going to say, because uh, you know I, I like some upsets every now and then, I think this is Bigfoot team is getting uh, better as the weeks go on. They've got Jackson ends at quarterback, one of the best athletes all around that we've got around here. And they've got Evansville, Albany in week nine. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Bigfoot springs the upset in week nine to help Clinton win the Rock Valley outright at eight and one. Yeah, and I suppose you can change global warming, too, while you're at it. But, uh, no, it, not going to happen. Uh, Evansville, Albany's rolling right now after that week two loss to Jefferson, just killing everybody, outscoring everybody. I think it's 100-something to 13 or something like that. And the Blue Devils, were, I thought, were the best team coming into the season. Um, you know, they got East Troy this week. East Troy started 3-0. They've struggled a little bit. And I just think the Blue Devils, with Brennan Banks, 
uh, Milky, and now that defense is really starting to roll. Uh, I don't see the Blue Devils leaving, losing, and I certainly don't see Clinton uh, slipping up either. So I think that uh, Clinton and Evansville will share the Rock Valley title, and even though Evansville won head-to-head, -head, that's not how you do things. So they will be co-champions in the first year of the Rock Valley Conference. Fair enough. Okay. Shout out to oh, Chase Katzenmeyer from yes. Albany as well, who seems to be doing a little bit of everything for the Blue Devils he these does. days. So yes. I will at least give the Blue Devils a hat tip. Okay. There. All right. Will Badger run the table? Uh, I guess the floor is yours here, Mr. Badger. Uh, Badger will run the table in the uh, Southern Lakes. Um, they just keep finding ways to win, and I think that's what it comes down to. It doesn't matter how pretty it is or how stylish it is. It's They just... Under Matt Hensler, they keep finding ways to win. A uh, big win over Wilmot last week. I know they still got Waterford on the schedule, but uh, I think Badger's in a place right now where uh, they're good enough offensively to stay in games, and that defense uh, has been pretty dominant. So, yes, I am going to say that the Badger Badgers will repeat as the Southern Lakes champion, and it'll be an undisputed title. 9-0, and huh? 9-0. Uh, I would kind of like to agree with you, but... Even the Badger coach himself, Matt Hensler, said that he didn't see a team going 9-0 and in this league. And so I have to just go ahead and agree with him and say that uh, they're going to slip up somewhere around here. They've had a couple close calls in the last couple of weeks. They've found a way to get it done, which kudos to them for doing that. Yep. But one of these times when you get locked in a close game in the fourth quarter, the other team's going to make one of those big plays uh, that winds up uh, nixing out their streak and stopping them from going 9-0. I'll say... Uh, I'm not even going to say who's, who's going to be. Cause that's well, it's not going to be this week, so it's got to be one of their last two games. Waterford, I they think, got Waterford left. They got Waterford left, and I think they've got... Uh, Let's see. They've got at Waterford week nine. I think okay. that's, I that's, think that's probably that's, the, the okay. toughest test. Because so I, I think they're winless with Stosha this week. At Elkhorn tonight, or uh, on Friday night. Yeah, Elkhorn struggling one and five. Then they host Union Grove. Okay, eight, all, right. So. all right. Waterford, I think, maybe gets them a little bit in week Badgers week nine and oh. Book it. Will McFarland lose its rock its first Rock Valley match this week? Uh, this is volleyball here we're going mm -hmm. to. Yep. Uh, McFarland went through the first half of the Rock Valley North Conference unbeaten. Uh, but this week is the big week because they have East Troy Tuesday night, which will already be done by the time right. you, guys, you guys are watching this. But right now, as we tape this, has not been played. And then they have to play against Edgerton, which took them to five uh, games in their first meeting. I will say that McFarland does indeed trip up uh, one of those two matches. Uh, will still be in the driver's seat if they if they at least go one and one this week. But I say uh, they lose to East Troy in the rematch uh, Tuesday night. Okay, and I'll say the polar opposite. I say they run the table. Uh, East Troy, they handled very easily the first time. I know the East Troy coach said it was a lesson learned after losing that match, but I think their depth and their front line's a difference. And I think against Edgerton, as much as I like that team and as much as Mike Schmidt likes that team, they just right now haven't focused enough to get it to going in the big matches. And Mike's been the first to say that. As he said, we sometimes leave, we don't leave enough out on the court. And uh, I'm going to say... It'll be close on Thursday night when McFarland plays Edgerton, but I'm going to say that McFarland finds a way to get it done, and they will be the undisputed Rock Valley champs. They're going to go probably, and then you're, I would assume you're going to say they're going to go ten and zero. Yes, because they're not going to trip up anywhere else. No, I don't. They're not. I don't see that happening. So. I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping for our sake that Edgerton does beat them, but I just got a feeling that Edgerton. Uh, hasn't quite peaked yet, and uh, it's not going to happen this week. It would be pretty fun if. Somehow, East Troy and Edgerton would both win this week, yes. and then Edgerton and East Troy would play. It would get real crazy. It, it could be, be a three-way tie. It would be crazy. Point, that wasn't one of our questions. You're not though. seeing that. Huh? No, and that wasn't part of the debate. So oh. I'm not oh. going to answer. Oh that. wow! I'm not answering that. Why don't you stick to the script? Wow. Will we get two area teams through to state girls golf? Um, I am going to say no. I'm going to say the Melton girls are a mortal lock to get through. Uh, the Parker girls are going to have to battle with Union Grove. They certainly are capable of getting through because they've shown that, including a, a team record score earlier this year. I believe it was 331, but not very consistent. And uh, when you're not playing on courses that you know, the Vikings have struggled a little bit. If it was sectional, was at Riverside? I'd say their chances were good. I believe the sectional, the regionals at Melton, tough course to play. And then they go to Wilmot. So I'm going to say that the Vikings get to the regional meet 
but I believe it's probably going to be Melton and Union Grove as the two representatives from our area. Oh, you're such a hater. Not a hater. I hope the bikes do it, but I just, they haven't been consistent enough. Well, I've been to a lot of places, you know. I've been to, I've been to Evansville, I've been to Parker, I've been to Riverside Golf Course, I've, I've, been, to, I've been to all these places. And, right, and I, just think, I just think that Parker is going to get it done in the end. I think uh, they got a couple seniors on this team that really want to go out with a bang. They got uh, O'Leary back in the lineup. I think that's going to be big here down the stretch. They're going to Milton Tuesday they're not, or Thursday. They're not going to have any problem getting through there uh, as one of the top four teams. They just don't have the stamina. They, they do. Have, they don't have they the do stamina have the to stamina. get through. They, they don't do. have the stamina, I'm telling you right now. They have the look of a team that I think will go to state mm -hmm. here in the last. Yeah, well, uh, I, I said they get that second spot over there at Wilmot, and we see Milton and Parker there in the team race. And Milton, I think, gives uh, the rest of these teams around the state the run for their money here and finishes a uh, top two when they wow. get to the state. Wow, top two. That would mean Middleton on basically their home course at the Ridge. And uh, I'm not sure who else is solid in the state, but that could certainly happen. But I don't think we're going to see the Vikings there as a team. We may see an individual there, but I don't think we'll see them there as a team. Hater. Uh -huh. Just yeah. a big it's hater. my alma mater. I hate him, yes. We're, we're on to round two here. I, I think I mean, Clearly I'm going, I to, won round going one. to assume the voters will let us know that I won that round. Uh, Clearly they easily, will because I, easily I took couple of bad stances on my that polls one. are the, the poll the early polls are showing that i mm -hmm. killed you in yeah, the first well, part of the debate that, was it the north pole or the south we are, we're moving are. on here from the high school ranks we're gonna we're gonna go into non-high school questions that would here. be college or pro i would assume yes yeah, so okay. well, we got some other eyeball are we going in there like too. k5 or something well okay all right go ahead after sunday's win is aaron Rodgers officially back Mr. Barry, the floor is yours. I don't think he was ever gone, so I will say no, he's not back because he was never gone. He just had some rough outings, and, uh, you know, he told people last year to relax, and what did he do? He came out and gunslinged his way around for five or six touchdowns. Same thing on Sunday, four touchdowns in the first half. Um, you, you can say he was back, but, again, uh, I don't think he was ever gone, and I think it's just indicative of when that offense gets going, they're pretty good, but they're also played a Lions team that was hurting defensively. So, I guess take it with a grain of salt if you think that that you know solidifies everything in, as far as Aaron Rodgers being back. But again, don't think he was gone in the first place. So, no, he's not back. I really? like you're dodging the question. I am dodging the question. The, yes. There wasn't the question wasn't was he ever gone? <laughs> well, it's, is he back? Which he was. How do you say he wasn't? It was like 14 straight weeks he didn't even get to 100 in the passer. Well, why didn't you bench him then? Why don't they a bench long, him? Well, I didn't say there was anybody better than him on the bench. I just oh, said he okay. wasn't his usual self. You put and, Randall uh, Cobb in and run the. Well, clearly he hasn't worked back there in the backfield either. Oh, so okay. I think they've stuck with who their best option was, but that doesn't mean he wasn't gone. I mean, that was like almost a full season's worth and never even going over 100 in the passer rating for a guy who holds the record in the NFL for career passer rating. That's, I think that's a bit of a recess there. And I think So he, you're saying he's back? So uh, one half. No, no, I, I'm actually going to agree with you that, oh, okay. that he's not back because okay. I don't, well, as you mentioned, the Lions – they're the Lions. They are the Lions. And That's your team, though. He also was one half. The second half, they didn't even really try to pass the ball. No, they didn't. So i got to see a little something more after the bye week here. They just start getting into the NFC East a little bit and seeing some of these other teams. And uh, uh, I think we got to see if he's back, but I think it was a good start. Okay. But I disagree with you that he was never gone. Anyway. All right. Well, there you go. How long will the Badgers remain undefeated? You want to go first on this no, one? No, your floor. Oh, boy. Your floor. I just wanted to argue with you. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to guess that you're going to be a homer on this one uh, and probably say that they'll just like go undefeated for the entire season. So I'm going to say, uh, unfortunately, and I hope that I'm incorrect, that they're going to lose this Saturday at the Big House in Ann Arbor. Uh, second straight week, they have to go to Michigan and play a top-10 team. And, uh, you know, I love the Badger defense. Uh, they've... Pretty much just crushed anybody that's come their way. But I think Michigan is a bit tougher test offensively than they've seen so far. And uh, I think it's a little bit much to ask a freshman quarterback to go on the road and win against two top ten teams two weeks in a row. I think you should give all of your Wisconsin gear back. <laughs> you should be kicked out of the UW Alumni Association. And anything you have to do with UW from this point on, you're banned from. So, no, I, I think Strong. if you look at it, I didn't expect them to be 4-0. I probably thought they'd be 2-2 two and two and they're 4-0. So I said from this, 
I said before the Michigan trip, if we can go 1-1, one one, I'd take it. Well, now I'm greedy. Let's go 2-0. and oh. No reason they can't. Michigan hasn't played anybody as good as us. Uh, they struggled a little bit at Colorado at home. Um, this is the best defense they'll see. And I think after going on the road and winning convincingly last week and really coming out of there without any big injuries, that the 106,000 people aren't going to bother, bother the Badgers. And I think they like being an underdog. And I think... They don't care what people are saying. They don't care if the pundits still don't think that they're legit or that the experts don't want to pick them, and uh, they're okay with that. They're just playing together as a team. They've kind of taken on the character of Chris. They don't get too high or too low, and they just go out and produce. And with Beagle and Watt and those guys, um, I think it's I think it's doable. Another 60-second question uh, answer, and you didn't even answer the damn question. Yes, I said. The question was, how long will they stand? Oh, how long? All you did was ramble on for sixty seconds about whether they would beat Michigan this week. Uh, we'll lose. Ohio State. Ohio State at home. Yes. Oh no. You'll. I'll, I'll make you turn your gear in. Then well, I can't. Get, I can't have us twelve and all. There's no way. Oh yeah, I can't, couldn't go out on a limb there, huh? <laughs> at least we get, finally got him to answer the question. That's right. Will the U.S. win the Ryder Cup? No. Ryder Cup this week in Minnesota. No, no, they haven't won it in so long, and um, Rory's playing well. Spieth's not playing well. Mickelson's about 74 years old, and uh, I, I don't think so. I just think the European team is too strong and too many good players, and I don't know enough of the U.S. guys to really know that they can compete, especially in the single match play. Um, you know, you got no Tiger. Um, Stricker's not playing. Um, a lot of young guys, Dustin Johnson and guys like that. But I think it's a tall order, and I just think there's too much talent on the European side. So I'm going to say no. The U.S. does not get back the Ryder Cup. Today. Oh, you're just full of haterade today. Mm -hmm. And you just throw Dustin Johnson out there like he hasn't done anything. He pretty He's much done. won everything this yeah. year and okay. uh, be the Player of the Year. Uh, I like how you just uh, now you know after a year where you were the Jordan Spieth fanboy of Janesville, you just toss him out there as a has been. Got to do something. And uh, let's go, America! Come on, we got to make America great again on the golf course. We do. So uh, you know, I think Spieth and Patrick Reed, a couple of young guns who uh, have shown plenty of confidence over the last couple of years, come in there and kind of set the tone. And uh, it's time time to win this thing on American soil. Uh, these young guns are, are going to get it done this week. And I hope I'm wrong, but I won't be. Will UW-Whitewater win the battle of top tens at UW-Platteville this week? Whitewater at Platteville. Uh, I think it's well, two uh, versus eight. That's a tough one, but I've, I'm have i going to go with the eternal pessimist and say no. The Warhawks do not win on Saturday. Um, tested last week in their game against Morningside, pulled away. But, um, you know, this is a whole different whole different game now with Platteville. You're in the WIC, you're on the road against a team that really is pretty good passing wise and that might be one of the Warhawks, you know, one of the areas of concern for Coach Bullis. So I'm going to say Whitewater starts the WIC 0-1. What about 0-2? Then they got to go against uh, Oshkosh the next week. Oh, so. Well, I'm it's not the, going that They got their ahead. two toughest games right here to start the WIC season and I think Knowing that and feeling that they have been tested in a couple of these games, I think is going to help them uh, as they start the WIC. And uh, I think the, my only worry is that uh, they've kind of gone with do both quarterbacks, yeah. and I don't. Not, that usually doesn't bode very well, uh, but they've found a way to get it done. So I can't really blame them for that. Marcus Hudson was back in the lineup. Uh, that helps. And Darian yes. Brad. Uh, I think that helps immensely. The defense is going to be the defense. Paul Foster's still there. Paul Foster's still leading that group. Uh, I say not only do the Warhawks win the opener, but the run in the table this year uh, all the way through the regular season. I hope you're right. What is the best team in the North American Hockey League? Team, team name, I think the, the question was I'm there. I'm sorry. Let's try that again. We're, we're only like four and a half games in like a 60-game season. Uh, i got to go so. with the Shreveport Mudbugs. I love the mud bugs. I think it was my turn to go first. This is uh, a couple other uh, the what is it jackalopes? The Odessa jackalopes I like, but I'm going to go with the Shreveport mud bugs because a I'm not even sure that that exists. I think it's a made up name. Uh, I've never heard of a mud bug. <laughs> Might be a southern thing. Is that is All that right. a southern thing, Angela? Uh, uh, I know what check. it is. No, well, <laughs> I'll fact check him on this one. I don't okay. even need to go to the fact checker because. 
If you're going to steal my answer, and I believe it was my floor there, oh, and you my stole bad. my answer, I'm at least going to correct you on what in the world mud bug is, which is a crayfish or a crawfish. How, no? No? Pronunciation is crawfish. Well, all right. Whatever, whatever it is, crayfish, crawfish. You uh, say potato, I'll say potato. Well, exactly. Yeah. Well, I like that you mentioned potatoes because you can throw them in there and the crawfish boil. Yeah, I mean, you throw some could, ears yeah. of corn in there and they're delicious. We could have and, a dump. Uh, Don't they call that a dump? I just wanted this question to be in there because the Jets did indeed beat the Shreveport Mudbugs the other day and I just thought that, that Well, then was I'll a, go with the Odessa Jackalopes. All right. Take the I like the Jackalopes. The Jackalopes actually don't exist, so you probably uh, should have gone with that I, as your original. I think I saw one on America's Funniest Home Videos one time. Somebody I saw one once in Douglas, Wyoming. But, okay, uh, all right. I think it was made up. That next to the unicorn you saw it too? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a fantastic. I knew that question was going to be one of the best ones. You said I read it wrong. Well, that's okay. Outside of Lester Holt over yes, here messing yes. it up. <laughs> Would you like to have a mulligan on any of your preseason NFL predictions? <laughs> How about them Saints? I think I think we should call Sean Hannity and let, ask see if he. I, I I think he'll tell you that. I told him actually before that show that I didn't pick the Saints. That's one of the worst. He'll he'll call you up. And call up Sean ever. Hannity. Call him up. He'll tell you. Yeah, I was talking to him the other day, and we were talking about how I didn't actually pick them, but then I came on the show and. It that all secondary got that secondary couldn't guard somebody standing in a phone booth. They're terrible, <laughs> just awful. However, uh, I don't need to take a mulligan on my actual Super Bowl winner because I don't think there's any other option right now to win it than the New England Patriots. Okay. They're 3-0. and Tom Brady hasn't even played a game yet. I might play quarterback for them in week four. They'll probably still be 4-0. Uh, Julian Edelman might play quarterback. I don't, it's the it Patriots. I, I Steve have, Grogan I got, might come I got that play. part right. I got the Patriots right. They're going to win the whole thing, but... Uh, uh, they're probably going to be. Against I don't the, think the probably going to be against the Packers. I'm going to go. I'm going to turn things on my, on the head here, and I'm going to win back the battle by not only admitting I was wrong, but saying it's the Packers that'll be in the Super Bowl. All right. Well, I had the Seahawks beating the Bengals, which uh, the Bengals, bye bye. They're not going anywhere. Uh, the Seahawks, uh, they got it together a little bit last Sunday, but I still think they're. It's not going to happen. Russell Wilson banged up. So I'm going to go with. I'm going to go with the Vikings, and I'm going to go with the Broncos in your wow. Super Bowl. Who's and, winning? Uh, in a defensive battle, I will take I'll take Sam Bradford oh over Trevor goodness. Simeon. The Minnesota Vikings are your 2016 You're going to need Super a mulligan Bowl. for your mulligan. That's right. You're going with a team that has Sam Bradford, a quarterback, that lost the running back. Just beat Carolina lost on their the road, tackle. beat the Packers. What more do they need? They got the best defense. Oh my goodness! Well, I'm just saying. We let you take a mulligan, and you just—you <laughs> not only switched your entire prediction. By the way, I only switched like a, not a sold third on of Seattle. Mine. Russell might be hurt. He's got a bad knee, gimping around. Wow. Sam Bradford taking him to the promised land. You're, go, you're going Sam Bradford versus Trevor Simeon in, yes. the, in the Super Bowl. Yes, I am. That's happening right now. Okay. All right. We'll see. Oh, will the goodness. Cubs make it to the World Series, and if so, will they win it? Uh, no, so obviously no, they won't make it to the World Series. No, I, I think it's going to be similar to last year, same script. I, I mean, the record doesn't matter since, what, 2,000 teams that have won 100 games, which the Cubs have now, only the Yankees have, have gone on to win the World Series, and I just think as good as the Cubs are and as strong as that lineup is, they're going to run into some hot pitching somewhere along the line, whether it's Washington or the Dodgers with Kershaw or somebody, and uh, they'll find a way to lose a, a seven-game series, and it'll come down to pitching. And Has Kershaw even pitched like in like two months? Yeah, he pitched the other day. Oh, he beat he the Giants. Okay. So uh, I'm saying no. The Cubs do not make it to the World Series, so um, that's what I'm sticking to. I will never, ever pick the Cubs to win the World Series, whether it's their one game away or a – Hundred games away, I would never just just never going to do it. But in the spirit of being different than you, I will say that they get there. Okay, uh, and maybe that will give me some more glee because if they made it and lost, that would, would maybe just break the Cubs fans' hearts even more than if they never even made it. No, there. it'll still be wait till next year. Um, like it give me. I think the Red Sox are the team that I'm looking at to win it all. Uh, getting hot here at the right time. They are, and I think. Uh, Big give, Poppy. Give, exactly. The, the last little swan song of Big Poppy, kind of ra everybody rally around that, and he goes out. Heck, let's just say they win it all, and he's the MVP of the World Series, and it's just it just all goes down like that, and Cubs fans will just 
have some other excuse as to why they're still cursed, uh, whether right. it's Barton or I'll Goat take, or something else. I'll take the Rangers over the. Uh, I'll take the Rangers over the Nationals. Nationals might have lost their catcher. I know Ramos is out. That hurts them. All right. Well, is that is that all you got, Lester? That's it from Lester. That's it. The, this debate is concluded. I obviously have kicked your butt. Clearly, um, yes. We'll uh, see. Time will tell. Make sure you check out GazetteExtra.com for all the fact checking. Mm-hmm. We've got all kinds of fact checking up there and uh, plans to defeat Bears predictions. Got everything up there. I really, if there were ten questions, I honestly believe I'll be like nine for ten. Oh, that's wow. that's how spot on I probably am going to be. Probably weren't ten questions. You probably no. can't even count. Yeah, well, that's... if there were eight, I'm seven for eight. Let us know who you think won. We need we need to create some polls. So we do. Uh, let us know via GazetteExtra.com. You can leave us a comment on YouTube or iTunes, or you can email us at sports at gazetteextra.com. Uh, maybe we'll keep these answers and see who wins. Uh, most of it, we'll know most of them, I guess, by the time the presidential race We probably race weren't is as over, entertaining so. as, as Trump and Hillary, though. Well, it's hard to be. It's hard to be that entertaining. Uh, but we also didn't waste 90 minutes of people's time. No, we didn't. That's so. true. We only wasted we about there. 25 minutes we, of their we time. We win so. the debate win. Yes. We got the, I think the polls will show that they for will. sure. Uh, thanks to Lester Holt slash Dave Vaughn over here and uh, Timekeeper Angela. Mudbug Angela, yes. Yes, mm-hmm. making make sure she fact checked us on the mud bugs. Uh-huh. Uh, that was appreciated. And to uh, Kevin McLeod for providing the official uh, soundtrack to the great 2016 Gazette Extra Points debate. Right. And we'll be back here with your reg- regularly scheduled programming next week. So thanks for joining us and let us know who won. Go, Bucky!